Uh, Tensei and good morning to everyone. On behalf of the province of Manitoba and my colleagues, I am honoured to be here with you today. I want to acknowledge that we are in Treaty 1 territory and that the land in which we gather is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabek, the Aininuwuk, the Anishininiwa, the Dakota and the Dene peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation. I also want to acknowledge and thank the organizers at the Thunderbird House for inviting us here today. Della Herrera of the Aboriginal Health and Wellness Centre was kind enough to share with me the spirit of what the Thunder House is, and I would like to share that. The Circle of Life Thunderbird House is an open Indigenous spiritual gathering place in Winnipeg for all people. It is the traditional spiritual, spiritual heart for all elders, healers, knowledge keepers, and helpers within the Indigenous community. Teachings of kindness, sharing, honesty, and traditional beliefs can be found within the Circle of Life Thunderbird House. They are open to providing guidance to those in need and support to Indigenous serving entities within our community and for those that come from other communities to our city. Because of COVID-19, there was a need for a space and center to be set up to assist in the identification and vaccination in our area. This was done by the Aboriginal Health and Wellness of Winnipeg for well over a year that met the needs of our community. They provided a place for gatherings of all kinds, ceremonies, feasts, meetings, memorial teachings, drumming, conferences, weddings, and giveaways. Everyone is welcome. Lastly, the Thunderbird House is an internationally recognized building that was created by the vision of elders led by Marie Richard. And this vision was made in, into form by celebrated indigenous architect, Douglas Cardinal who infused the designs with the sacred principles of iconography of Indigenous teachings. Once again, thank you for inviting us to this beautiful and important space. I would like to in introduce those joining us here today. Premier Calvin Gertsen, Minister of Health and Seniors Care, and Minister of Mental Health, Wellness and Recovery, Audrey Gordon. Also joining us are Grand Chief Arlen Dumas, Vice Chief David Manias of the Manitoba Kuwaitanawi Okimakinak, Damon Johnson of the Aboriginal Council of Winnipeg, Della Herrera of the Aboriginal Health and Wellness Centre, Diane Redsky of the Mama Wichi. Tata Center, Brian Bowman, Mayor of Winnipeg, and Deputy Mayor Councillor John Orlico, and Acting Deputy Mayor Marcus Chambers, Dr. Marcia Anderson, Dr. Marcia Anderson, Public Health Lead, Manitoba First Nation Pandemic Response Coordination Team, Dr. Lavalee, CEO of Kuwaitanoic, Ainin in Maneo, Yawin. I would also like to acknowledge the following community partners attending today. Donna Jacobs, manager of the Winnipeg Regional Health Authority. Melanie McKinnon, head of Ongo Mizewin with the University of Manitoba. Mitch Moore, Indigenous Seniors Resource Coordinator, Portage La Prairie Community Re Revitalization Corporation. Cornell Passe, PUIPC Coordinator, Portage La Prairie Community Revitalization Corp. Robbie Longclaws, Ask Anti Coordinator, Portage La Prairie Community Revitalization Corporation. Maria Reyes, Director of Program Reviews, Treasury Board Secretariat. Teresa Dukes, Director, Social Innovation Office, 
families, and Melly Ching, Associate Innovative Finance Families. I would now like to invite the Premier to say a few words. Thank you, uh, Minister Lajamodi. It is an honor to be here this morning at beautiful Thunderbird House uh, for this important announcement. The last 18 months has been difficult for many in our province. The vaccine effort over the last several months has been nothing short of monumental for all those who've been involved. Things such as super sites, which we'd never heard before, or waiting for your age to come up to be able to get a vaccine, things we'd never thought of before, long lineups to get a vaccination. All of this because Manitobans want to be able to continue on to do the things that they love. And in some of those things, uh, they didn't all go perfectly, but there's certainly been learning along the way. And one of the things I think that we have learned well is that things go better when they're done in partnership. And that is represented here today, the partnership with the various organizations that have been involved with the Indigenous leadership who've been instrumental in ensuring that the vaccine outreach is appropriate and that it's effective in the communities that we are trying to reach has been significant. That, I hope, is a learning that will continue on long beyond COVID-19 whenever this pandemic is over, and we all wish it to be over soon, is that the partnerships that we've established and the services that we can deliver are better when we deliver them together. I want to thank all those organizations who are particularly involved in this initiative and have been over the last several months. I want to thank the chiefs, of course, Grand Chief Dumas, uh, Mayor of Winnipeg, Brian Bowman, thank you for accepting the invitation to be here today. You are all leaders who care deeply about the people in who you lead, and you've demonstrated that over these last months, and the province of Manitoba is grateful for your leadership and your caring and your compassion. I'd now like to welcome my colleague from the Manitoba Legislature, the Minister of Health, to make today's announcement. Thank you, Premier Gertsen, for the introduction. It's wonderful to be back in Thunderbird House. For This is my second visit here. My first visit was when I worked for the kidney dialysis program with the WRHA, and I had the pleasure of working with First Nations, Inuit, and Indigenous people to plan screening of um, risks for kidney disease in First Nation communities, and I was able to do some of that work here, so it's wonderful to be back in this building. As the Minister responsible for Health and Seniors Care, again, it's an honour to be here. I would like to welcome Grand Chief Dumas, uh, His Worship Mayor Brian Bowman, and other dignitaries that have joined us, and individuals who work behind the scenes to help us with our vaccination campaign. I also want to recognize uh, the incredible efforts shown by all our First Nation communities, Métis and Inuit peoples during the Manitoba vaccination campaign. Your leadership and partnership has been the cornerstone of success and has truly kept your people and your community safe through your actions. Today, I am pleased to announce that Manitoba has invested an additional $2.8 million into community urban Indigenous clinics. These resources will extend and expand their role and will increase vaccination rates against COVID-19 among First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. To date, these clinics have vaccinated more than 58,000 people. With this additional funding, Manitoba's five urban Indigenous clinics will continue to provide support until the end of the year. The five clinics are Aboriginal Health and Wellness Centre and Mama Wichita Centre in Winnipeg, Portage La Prairie Renewal Corporation, Mama Wetak Friendship Centre in Thompson, and Brandon Friendship Centre. We know, as the Premier mentioned, that outreach and partnership is more critical than ever as we aim to make the vaccine as accessible as possible. 
for those who may find it challenging to come into a site such as our super sites to get vaccinated these resources will go towards supporting a mobile outreach campaign. This allows regional health authority staff, Aboriginal health and wellness centre staff, and Mama Wichita centre staff to go out into the community and bring the accessibility to their neighbourhoods. We know, again, as the Premier mentioned, I stated before, that coming together as partners works Vaccine uptake rates are two and three times higher in Point Douglas and Downtown East because of that collaboration. This level of unprecedented success is a reflection of our partnership and the value of co-leading and co-designing healthcare services with Indigenous partners and leaders. It is also a reflection of the effectiveness of the collaboration between the Regional Health Authority and Indigenous-led organizations. We are also pleased to announce that a portion of the $2.8 million will go to services with the Rady Faculty of Health Sciences Centre at the University of Manitoba, where we will be helping to hire a director to continue the work with our First Nations, Métis and Inuit partners. Thank you all, all of you, for the incredible work that you're doing, both at, at the front lines and behind the scenes, to keep our clinics and our vaccination rates increasing. I would now like to pass this over to Grand Chief Arlen Dumas. Kansi. Anin Buzun and Naskumuni State, I pick up Siski Piggy Squian, Naskumo Premier Stagi Piamit. Bring greetings on behalf of the uh, all the chiefs of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs. I want to acknowledge the Premier for his opening words and his comments. Uh, Thunderbird House is a, a very beautiful place. Uh, thank you, Minister Gordon, for your for your introduction. And I also want to acknowledge uh, Chief David Munyas, who is here with us today. Uh, Chief Munez and his health team leads have been very instrumental in, in how we've been able to deal with the, uh, the pandemic uh, overall. I also want to acknowledge the, uh, my colleagues who are in the room, Dr. Anderson and Mel McKinnon, uh, who, were, who were given the uh, mandate by the Executive Council of Chiefs to, to spearhead and, and give us the guidance we needed in order for us to be as, uh, as efficient as possible. And fundamentally, everybody who is part of the Assembly are, are Northern Organization, MKO, SCO, and everybody uh, for the uh, precedents that were set uh, from Manitoba. Um, I think that it's, it's important to acknowledge all of those people, all of our health team leads, everybody who had brought their best forward to, to help us deal with, with what it was we were doing. Uh, it's very uh, uh, positive for us to be able to gather here today like we are, because a year ago we wouldn't have been e even been able to do this. However, you know, it's a testament to the, all the good work and the, the efforts that were brought forward uh, to do what we're doing. Um, I also, again, I want to mention the First Nations Pandemic Response Team. I also want to acknowledge all of our allies within the provincial health care system who helped us achieve what we were able to achieve. And I guess uh, because we all have a different lens, you know, and, and oftentimes we, we don't focus on some of the stories that we need to focus on. But a few months ago, when there was national candidates all vying to be the national chief, and we were able to facilitate a meeting for them, each and every one of those candidates praised the work of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, the Assembly of the First Nations Pandemic Response Team, which in turn means all of you who are here today, and how they all borrowed from the precedents that we had set so that they could actually better their regions and their, and, and their areas. So it's another example of where, uh, uh, if, you, if you follow First Nations acumen, First Nations expertise, and First Nations guidance, everybody does better. And uh, we, we all need to continue moving on in that direction. I also want to acknowledge uh, Mayor Bowman, because when the Executive Council of, of Chiefs declared a state of emergency on all of our collective behalfs, uh, 18 months ago, you know, uh, the, the province and then, you know, Mayor Bowman and, and his council were, 
were some of the first to come forward and, and support us on, on that initiative. And I believe that uh, that collective effort has actually helped save uh, uh, countless lives here in Manitoba. And we have to continue uh, moving forward. And I see Dr. Lavalle here, good to see you too. Um, but I'm, I'm truly, it's truly an honor to be here today. I actually had to uh, change my schedule so I could be here and, and be a part of this uh, message. And uh, you know, I'll, eventually I'll have to take my granny to her appointment, but she's strong. Um, just kidding, my granny would probably take me to my appointment. Um, uh, but with that said, friends, colleagues, uh, truly an honor to be here today. And uh, you know, I stand completely in support of our First Nations pandemic response team and all of our valuable allies who have done tremendous work and uh, you can count on me if ever you need some assistance. So, Igusani, Kinanaskumit Namao, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Grand Chief Dumas, for your words. Very much appreciated. I would now like to call on uh, Vice Chief David Manias to say a few words. David Thank you, everybody. I greet every one of you. I greet family and friends, citizens of my community, for all about the citizens from Winnipeg as well. My name uh, is Chief David Monias, Chief of the Nation, I am double vaccinated. <laughs> this is the reason why we are here. We fought hard for our lives, literally, to be able to stand before you in a room, in a crowded room, spatially separated six feet apart. About 17 months ago, it's when our lockdown started, in March 16, we declared a state of emergency in Cross Lake, followed by Manitoba, March 18th or 19th, around there. We locked our, ourselves in the community. One of the things we wanted to do was that, uh, first of all, understand this, there's many diseases. And these diseases are preventable by wearing masks, being careful around people, washing hands. When I came here to, uh, this week to Winnipeg, I didn't expect to be here, but I'm standing here on behalf of uh, MKO Grand Chief, Kirsten Sati. I came here to meet with uh, Minister Warden and Minister Lachimori. We had a good meeting discussing our low water and also our Northern Flood Agreement. Met with their department heads. But I also came here to look for my citizen, Jesse McKay, who is missing right now. I spent my time yesterday on a boat searching for her in the river and her family on the streets are looking for her. And this presented with me an opportunity to stand before you and I'm glad it happened this way. A few months ago I said that COVID does not discriminate. I'm here to tell you I learned a lot from society, it does discriminate. It discriminates against the weak, against the people who are, have compromised autoimmune systems. 
It discriminates against people who are not vaccinated. It discriminates against those people. And those people pose a, road, a risk to their children who are not vaccinated. They pose a risk to their families, to their communities, also to the nation. As a chief, I'm mostly reminded about people's human rights, about the charter of rights, about choice. I respect that. But our people in New York, in the Sin New York, we respect those rights, but we held, hold in higher esteem our responsibility to our children, our responsibility to our families, our responsibility to our communities, our responsibility to the nation. It's not about me, it's about my children back home. Vaccines, vaccines have been in, in, in place for a long time. So those people who have or say that this is actually a, a plan to do something, to put a chip on my shoulder or whatever, that they would have done that a long time ago already because I've been vaccinated, our people have been vaccinated for years. Diseases come and go. You know, diseases have been there forever. And you see it rise where we're not vaccinated. But you also see the trends that they go down when we are vaccinated. This is something we can't see. And I'm proud to stand before you as mayor, as you as premier, you as grand chief, Dr. Lafali, Dr. Marsha Anderson, minister, you know, minister. Now, we can only do this in unity. We can only do it together, to fight together, to protect our citizens, the most vulnerable people. And I'm happy and I thank you for introducing these funds to make it happen in our community, to fight and save our people, literally. Can I ask you to ask you? I thank you. I will stand with you. I will fight with you. I will do it in partnership with you in unity to fight this disease, to fight this virus, and to protect our people. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Chief Monias, and I, I think I can speak for us all in the room here today when I say we all stand with you in the search for our sister who is currently lost, and we all pray for her safe return back to the community. I would like to now call on Mayor David, or, sorry, Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Bowman, say a few words. It's a hard speaker to follow. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, bonjour à tout et à tous. Uh, I really do appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to say a few words. Uh, merci de me réservoir pour me vous aujourd'hui. Uh, I, want, I too want to begin by acknowledging we are on Treaty 1 and Dakota Nations territory and the traditional homeland of the Métis Nation. Uh, I want to thank the Premier, I want to thank uh, ministers uh, for the opportunity to join you today for today's provincial announcement. I want to acknowledge, of course, Grand Chief and Chief. Uh, of course, our, our Deputy Mayor and Acting Deputy Mayor, both who have been um, very strong in, in publicly promoting uh, vaccines throughout our community. I appreciate your work. And of course, all of the healthcare heroes that are here, uh, Dr. Anderson and, and so many others I know are on the front lines and are, are saving the lives of our residents each and every day. Um, I do appreciate, as I acknowledge, I want to just say thank you to the Premier. Uh, this level of dialogue and, and, and collaboration is something that I think helps all the residents that we serve. We're, we're all Manitobans, we're all Canadians, and our battle is against this virus. And uh, today's announcement 
is, uh, is very positive. I want to thank the provincial government for making this investment uh, in our community and in other communities. Um, this is, uh, this is a, an effort that, uh, that we've never had to deal with before, as the Premier noted, and it's one in which uh, everybody ha has a role to play. Uh, government officials, healthcare heroes, but also our residents in stepping up and rolling up their sleeves and making sure that they're getting uh, their vaccines. I've, I too have been double vaxxed. My, my wife Tracy, our, our son who's eligible, uh, our youngest uh, son is, is looking forward to when he, he is eligible. He's, he's too young right now. Um, I have uh, certainly heard the, the calls uh, for freedom, the end to tyranny, and all of the other rhetoric that we see uh, online. Uh, as well as uh, in, other, in other platforms. Uh, let's be very clear, there's nothing more tyrannical than a virus that ends a life, uh, that limits our freedoms, that reduces uh, our activities in terms of economic activity and, and just the freedoms that we all enjoy. And the path to freedom is by getting vaccinated. The path to freedom and restoring all of the, the, the rights and liberties that we all enjoy and want to enjoy is by making sure that we're protecting ourselves and our community uh, from this virus. And so for those that are on the front lines, uh, for those that are, are, are showing up and are getting double vaccinated in order to restore our freedoms and to protect, uh, to protect all that we enjoy in our community, uh, I say thank you. Uh, this announcement in the funds that are being made available is incredibly important because it's about reducing and uh, access and barriers to access to, uh, to the vaccines, and so it's incredibly important. I think Chief uh, spoke very eloquently about um, how, how those in our community, uh, some are disproportionately being affected, uh, as they often are in situations like this. And so that's why these additional funds are incredibly important, and I want to thank the province for making them available in our community, uh, to doing what they can to, to break down those barriers to access to the vaccine so that we can protect uh, some of our most uh, vulnerable residents. Um, this is the way that we can also support uh, the healthcare heroes in our ICU units. Uh, they are calling on us to do our part so that we can support them. And the way that we do that is for businesses and organizations to support these efforts, for healthcare heroes to have the support uh, that they're getting uh, with today's announcement. And so I would just say to, to those that might be uh, the recipients of misinformation online about vaccines, um, go to trusted sources, go to uh, protectmb.ca, consult uh, your, 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 your family physician, uh, there's physicians here, um, but uh, go to credible sources, get informed, and then uh, roll up your arm and, and get the vaccine. That's how we restore our freedoms in our community. Uh, with that, thank you very much. I appreciate always being in uh, this beautiful space. And I uh, just want to thank everybody for all their efforts and for the invitation of the Premier for today's announcement. Thank you. Merci, McGwitch. Thanks. Well, thank you for those words, Mayor Bowman. And uh, I think you hit the nail on the head. We're all in this together in our fight against the uh, um, Waging war on a, on a virus we can't see, but we have to deal with it and we have to do our best. So I would now like to ask Damon Johnson of the Aboriginal Council of Winnipeg to say a few words. Thank you, Minister Lazimodier. Bonjour, uh, Welcome, everyone. Uh, pleasure to be here today and say a few words in particularly recognizing this very special place we're all uh, sitting and standing in right now uh, that has been under serious uh, attack uh, for at least the last uh, few months. I want to also recognize my co-chair of the Thunderbird House, Mr. David Morrison, uh, who's one of the most caring people I've ever met. Anyways, uh, I want to thank the, the Premier, the Mayor, Mayor Chief Dumas, Minister Gordon, all of you for being here today with us. Um, this is a, a real opportunity to uh, bring some attention to a major issue that's happening in Winnipeg around homelessness, mental health and addictions, and it's also part of the intergenerational trauma of 
Indigenous Peoples in Canada, First Nations, Métis and Inuit, and in particular First Nations because they were treated quite differently than the other Indigenous groups. And that will have to be recognized within our process of truth and reconciliation. And in particular, the truth, because we do not have consensus on truth as yet. Uh, I look at these things differently because I was born in a different place. I wasn't born on my reserve. I was born off reserve. And so I truly understand and appreciate the effects of colonization and oppression. And it was oppression because there's only one race in the world, that's the human race. We, were all, we are all human beings first and foremost. And if we don't treat each other that way, that's when you see genocide, that's when you see war, that's when you see pestilence. Yes, all the ugly stuff that forms a part of our world. And it's leadership. It is leaders who make the difference. And if you don't use your opportunity as a leader to make a true difference, then you are not honoring the people who voted for you, who put you in your place. You must not forget that. And I say that loudly because it's coming from my heart. This city and this province can be an example to the world of the kind of relationship that you can build with Indigenous peoples. And I say First Nations, Métis and Inuit, because we too are equal. The Métis would be a part of our family, would be First Nations today, if not for the Indian Act. This was a direct interference in our genetics. No group in the world, identity is controlled by law. So these are the things that we have to change under Truth and Reconciliation. And you will hear more from me in the very near future. Winnipeg is changing. First Nations capacity, Métis capacity, Inuit capacity, and the urban capacity that I'm one of the leaders of. Diane is another one of my co-leaders. I don't see myself, uh, you know, I'm called the president of the Aboriginal Council of Winnipeg. But to everybody, I'm just Damon. That's who I am. I'm no better, no less than anyone else. This COVID, I want to thank the Premier for this investment. It's absolutely necessary. Someone has already mentioned the success of the setting up of the COVID-19 test site here and then the uh, vaccination center that we have across the street in the Negadon Center. And I think Indigenous leadership has demonstrated in a real way our responsibility, our commitment to our people. And so going forward, I look forward to working with Premier Gertsen and then whoever the next leader of the Conservative Party is, with M Mayor Bowman and with our Prime Minister, to begin addressing this homelessness in this city. Because it is, it's out of control. It's out of control. And these people that come here every day are some of the nicest people in the world. They are hurting beyond your imagination. But they will say, yes, sir, no, sir, thank you, sir. Can I pick up some garbage, sir? But when they're, when they're using alcohol or drugs, they're a whole different person. And we know the science behind that. And again, I thank Premier Gertsen because this government, Conservative government, I was appointed the chair of the Addictions Foundation of Manitoba. And when your government came in, you kept me in that position. And I think I've tried to serve you well. <laughs> but I'm going to stop there. But I just want to thank everyone for being here today. I hope you're going to work with us. Grand Chief Dumas already uh, spoke to me this morning about the First Nations interest in Thunderbird House. We will talk to them about that and we will see where that goes. But I know that owning a building is a responsibility and if you can't keep it up it's going to fall down around, your, around you and so that's a part of the equation as well. So uh, and then my colleague uh, President David Chartrand, who I enjoy a good relationship. I wish he was here today, but we will reach out to him and the Métis Nation as well 
as well as Mr. Ford, if he's still the president of the Manitoba Indian Association, we will reach out to them as well. We all have to come together. So thank you very much. Have a good weekend and stay safe and love you all. Thanks. Well, thank you, Mr. Johnson, for your words. I would now like to invite Diane Redsky of the Mama Wiwi Chai Chi Tata Center and Della Herrera of the Aboriginal Health and Wellness Center, whose teams have worked so hard at the two urban indigenous vaccine clinics based here in Winnipeg. Good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to be here and speak to all of you about our important endeavors related to COVID-19 response. Premier Gertsen, Mayor Bowman, Minister Gordon, Minister Lajimontier, Grand Chief Dumas, Grand Chief Monius, and elders and all dignitaries, good morning. Sandra and Shane, thank you so much for that beautiful and necessary opening. Dr. Lavallee, thank you for being here. I always like to start presentations in a good way by acknowledging the words of a community lead member who was standing in our line at our vaccine center. It went like this, mom, I was standing in line and one of the staff was asking everyone in line if they were indigenous. And I said, I was. The staff took me to the front of the line to get my vaccine shot. Mom, for the first time, because I am Indigenous, I got to go to the front of the line. Is that not a powerful message? In April, our partnership with the Manitoba Provincial Government saw the opening of one of Winnipeg's urban Indigenous vaccine centres. In the five months, we have been open, we have successfully administered over 22,000 vaccine shots and connected community members to resources and supports they need. We have a vaccine team comprised of 27 staff. Our staff are dedicated to providing compassionate, anti-racist health care and social supports. Dr. Barry Lavalle, I want to thank you and your team. It was because of our collaborative efforts that we were able to mobilize a vaccine outreach team as well as provide primary care to our relatives on the street. So thank you. Also, Diane Redsky, Mamaway Executive Director. It was our sister agency's collaboration that further mobilized our vaccine efforts when we went to the North End and downtown Point Douglas neighborhoods. There we provided front door access to our relatives and community members as means to support vaccine education and uptake. Thank you. We also collaborated with Main Street Project and to date we have visited over 60 encampments. Our goal is to visit every encampment under the bridge community in as many populated meeting hubs as we can over the next three months. This extension will allow us to provide QR codes and vaccine cards to our community and importantly, the unsheltered through our mobile efforts. We want our relatives and community to be afforded the same access as everyone else. Our vaccine center will remain open until the end of the year, and we will offer not only COVID vaccines, but also influenza and youth catch-up immunization as well. I want to say merci, thank you, miigwech, to our dedicated staff, as well as to Damon Johnston, David Morrison, Teresa Dukes, Maria Reyes, Donna Jacobs, Melanie Ching, and WRJ partners who have supported this endeavor. 
Thank you, everyone. Is it still morning? Morning or early afternoon? Um, so I first wish to acknowledge the Treaty 1 territory that we all have the privilege of, uh, some of us, living and working on, uh, and homeland of the Métis Nation, as well as acknowledge Show Lake First Nation 40 for the water that uh, we all benefit from here in the city of Winnipeg. I'd also like to acknowledge, uh, because I think it's really symbolic and important that we're in the Circle of Life Thunderbird House, and you know it can't go without saying um, our relatives who are outside. And so I ask that those of you, you say your special prayer, you, you do, you be part of the solution uh, to help our, our homeless Indigenous relatives who are, as you leave here, uh, you'll have, uh, you'll be walking by. And so there's lots of opportunity for people to be involved. That being said, um, I'd really like to thank everybody for being here and thank the, the province of Manitoba for this really important funding. It really wasn't until the urban indigenous vaccin vaccination centers that we, that every single Manitoban had equitable access to vaccinations. So it wasn't until that happened was it equitable for everybody. And so that is a huge milestone. It took a lot of hard work. <clears throat> it took a lot of hard work for everybody to come together and make that happen and you know and I really want to acknowledge it was the the women from the community who came together and wanted to problem solve and so you know our sister organization Aboriginal Health and Wellness uh, and really the leadership and the support and the guidance and the encouragement through Dr. Anderson and Melanie McKinnon was just really gave us the hope that we could really pull this off and as well as our our provincial uh, partners and committee who you know again this was literally a day and night working weekends uh, uh, to make this happen and so it was a real true dedication and a real co-development effort uh, that was uh, had by many people and so the relationships are really important for the work that we do at community-based organizations our community urban indigenous people trust the Mamawichita Center urban indigenous people trust Aboriginal health and wellness and they come to our places and we know that they have a mistrust of the public health system and we knew we were going to fight an uphill battle with trying to convince our community that this is going to be safe and it's in everybody's best interest to get vaccinated. And so we are, we are, uh, it was a really important role and responsibility for our organizations to create and, and build those partnerships so that the vaccinations are accessible to, to our community. And so I, I felt it was really important that you understand the, the background work that was, that was instrumental in making this happen because I see this as the first of many steps that we need to take in health transformation. That while we, we were able to do this really important piece, that we've had a lot of really good learning that we can move forward and really change the future for urban indigenous people here in, in Winnipeg, but also in other urban centers across our province. And similar to, to uh, our sister agency, Aboriginal Health and Wellness, the Mamwichita Center has also done uh, over 22,000 vaccinations since we started. And so that is also an incredible amount of hard work but at the same time we didn't expect people just to come to us we went to them and so we did mobile we did door-to-door -door, we did everything we could to try you know to to convince our community and create those opportunities for a community to have uh the conversations and get the facts and again it is through our our partnership and through you know between dr anderson and dr lavalle uh, you know, when you see somebody who looks like you tell you that it's safe to do so and, and it's, it's rooted in science and you're going to be okay and this is the, you know, good for all of us, this is important for protecting our families, that went a long way with us being able to, to, to provide the vaccinations within our community and so we are, we are extremely grateful. So as I talk about the health transformation, there are some promising next steps and 
the Mama Wichita Center and Aboriginal Health and Wellness, we're looking forward to again rolling up our sleeves and continue this, con this, this conversation and this health transformation. Vaccinations was one thing, but we got more, way more that we want to accomplish uh, for urban Indigenous people here in the city of Winnipeg and in other urban centres across uh, Manitoba. And so I'd like to thank Sandra and, uh, um, and for the song that was uh, done this morning. Uh, that always is uh, good for, for, for our hearts uh, to start off in a good way. I'd like to thank all the leaders that are here. Uh, we, it's incredible to see all of you all in one room and again shows how serious you take uh, uh, the support of this initiative happening within, within our city are certainly our government partners, Dr. Anderson, Mel McKinnon, uh, our provincial team uh, as well that made this happen, Aboriginal Health and Wellness Center, um, the Mama Wichita Center staff, and we have Marion as one of many uh, people that are here. We have Jackie Anderson, but most importantly, our community uh, who trusted us to, uh, to make this available. And so it is with, uh, their blessing and, and their inspiration that we continue to do this work. Miigwech. Well, thank you, uh, Diane and Della. And uh, I just want to say um, thank you for the tour uh, last week, or the week before. You lose track of time, you get so busy sometimes. But I was very impressed with your programming. Uh, and what you're offering, and the fact that you're actually going into these encampments to try and encourage people to get vaccinated, and the people that come into uh, the, the centers, you're providing the culturally important supports that they need to be assured that this is the right thing to do. So thank you for what you do. Uh, I would like to now to invite Dr. Marcia Anderson to share a few words with us. It's really good to be here with all of you, um, and it's good for our hearts to be within this particular space, uh, to hear the prayers of Sandra and Shane, thank you for this song, and to hear the Dakota and Cree language being spoken. You know, um, Pimichikamak is the community with the highest vaccine coverage in Manitoba. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they also set the record from when the vaccine landed on the ground to when that first needle was in the arm in a way that kind of surprised us a little bit. <laughs> but that velocity kept going throughout January, February and the early months. And as of yesterday, vaccine coverage for First Nations people living on reserve is over 90% with at least one dose. And I think that is really clear evidence of the effectiveness of First Nations leadership, of partnerships. Mel and I are very thankful for the support of Dr. Polstil and the university in supporting our work with the Manitoba First Nations Pandemic Response Coordination Team. There were a lot of meetings that I had with the Vaccine Task Force appreciating our very collaborative relationship and a lot of weekly Facebook Lives where we announced that 50 to 60 percent of people in, hos of, in hospital or in the ICU were First Nations people. As of yesterday, only 16% of people in the hospital are First Nations. And there is only one First Nations person in the ICU with COVID-19. This is a remar remarkable success of First Nations leadership and First Nations health, and of course, the safety and effectiveness of COVID-19 vaccines. The vaccination rate for off-reserve First Nations has lagged, and in part because, as, as Della and Diane mentioned, their urban Indigenous clinics didn't open until April. It took longer for us to leverage the same Indigenous leadership and partnership-based approach in the urban environment. But since that involvement, um, and since their leadership and operationalization, off-reserve coverage has also increased significantly and steadily and is also significantly contributing to the reduced severe outcomes that we're seeing amongst First Nations people. 
I do also want to thank our federal partners um, for their role in this too, because their support was instrumental in standing up the testing site that Mama Wichita offers with their wraparound cultural-based support, which was a precursor to this partnership for the vaccine clinics as well. As Diane mentioned, and what I wanted to build on, was the opportunity for us to continue to build on this momentum as we continue with health systems transformation provincially and federally, as we examine our structures, our legislation, our policy, and our funding environments. I think it's critical that we continue this model of Indigenous leadership, of Indigenous health experts at the table, at every decision-making table, of the collaborative relationships between provincial, federal governments, First Nations organizations, urban Indigenous organizations, and the Rady Faculty of Health Science, so we can see the improved outcomes that we are seeing in COVID-19 among First Nations in every health outcome. Uh, Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Anderson. I would like to now call on Dr. Lavalli to come up and say a few words. Uh, good afternoon. I unfortunately had an injury, so I'm hobbling a little bit. Um, but there's really, I have not much to say with such incredible speakers like my chief, uh, Monyas, very powerful and uh, emotive responses from the whole lot of you. Um, what I do want to do is I want to acknowledge that there are people just outside this building who sleep in the cold. Um, sometimes they don't have food. Uh, their risk of disease is high because the environment that they exist in actually diminishes their ability to even fight things like common cold or, or leg infections. And my, my thing uh, I want uh, documented is that it is the women in the First Nations communities that have driven uh, the response to this pandemic. I'm talking about our First Nations nurses who went right into the, into the dust, the clouds of, of uh, COVID and started vaccinating, started testing uh, without fear. And I want it documented for our uh, descendants that uh, Melanie McKinnon um, and uh, Dr. Marsha Anderson and several other First Nations uh, female leaders um, drove uh, this response to this pandemic. <laughs> and as a mentor to Dr. Marsha Anderson, uh, Premier, I want her becoming the uh, Dean of this medical school so that we can actually take over uh, the systems and try and make adaptations. I still have that for you.